Welcome to episode 1 of the Conquest Champions League. In this video, we have a competitive matchup of the Rangers versus the Haradrim. In the Conquest Champions League, I've taken 8 tournament veterans and pitted them against each other in an elimination style tournament. If you want to get an introduction to every player and their army list, you can check out this video in the top corner. Round 1 is going to have some incredible games. After this episode, we're going to see PJ playing his army of the dead going up against Nathan playing his Urukai. Then it's Tyler with the two High Kings versus David with the Witch King and a Great Beast. Final game for round one is Jeremy playing his army of Lake Town versus Marcus with his Easterlings. This is a pure elimination tournament, so if you lose one game, you are out. And the winner will progress to the semi-final. Let's meet our players for game one. G'day, I'm Sean from the Last Lines of Noobs and Men, and today I'm facing the big dog Alex. Very scary player, big name in the Victorian community. So I'm really, really excited to throw down against him with my Dunedain Rangers, my beloved Rangers. Uh, the list consists of Arathorn and 23 Dunedain that hit 650 points on the dot. Hey guys, it's Alex and I'm bringing back the Serpent Horde army that I've shown on other battle reports. Essentially, it's Soladan, the Betrayer, Raza and the Taskmaster with 38 models total, lots of bows, a decent contingent of cav, and we're just going to bring a lot of hitting power and a lot of shooting power to the game. If there's a decent turn of shooting from him when I can't respond in my nice little bubble of rerolls, it could be rough sword and might take a couple hits, Raza might go down, who knows? Ah, boy, the game plan against his Harad. I'm just going to shoot the shit out of him. This video is sponsored by Epic Basing. Epic Basing make a huge variety of bits to put on your miniatures bases. Alex decided to use their spotted mushrooms on the basis of his Kazadoom dwarves. PJ has their cedar bushes and fern plants on the basis of his Bjornings army, and I'm using their hedgehog and saguaro cacti on the basis of my Far Harad miniatures. I'm going to be using these bits across every single army that I make from now on, because they just make the bases look so good. You can either buy all of their products as physical pieces, or you can get the STL files so you can print them yourself at home. The first 75 people to use the code EPICCONQUEST13 will save 13% off their resin or digital orders at epicbasing.com. Thank you so much to Epic Basing for making the Conquest Champions League possible, and let's get back into the battle report. The scenario that I chose for this game is Domination. In Domination, there are five objective markers, one in the center of the table, and then the players take turns placing the other four. Each objective at the end of the game is worth two points, and you also score one point for wounding the enemy leader and breaking the enemy army. I chose Domination because it means that these two shooting armies won't be able to stand back and shoot. If someone wants to stay still, well then they'll lose all the objectives, so it's going to force them together. And that takes us into the deployment, which for these two armies actually took a very long time. Every single model in Sean's army is a separate warband, which means they were all going down individually. Sean was able to just put a handful of guys down in the time that it took Alex to put his whole entire army down, so then he had a lot of control on where he would put the rest of his forces. And interestingly, he mainly chose to split up into small little groups of three or four so that Alex won't be able to get all of his guys in one go and they are spread all around his side of the table. Let's get into this game, guys. Alright, best of luck. I asked you, the viewers, who you thought would win, and 53% were in favor of Alex and 47% in favor of Sean, so this is looking like it's going to be a close one. Priority this turn went to Sean. Sean, what have you done in your move phase? Absolutely nothing. I've passed my movement straight over to Alex. I'm going to psych this boy out with a no movement Sean phase. And Alex's movement was very strange. All he did was reposition some of his cavalry, but he kept all of his archers still as well. So we're at the end of the movement phase and that is absolutely not what I was expecting. No movement out of Sean, Alex, barely any movement out of you. Yeah. That's gonna take us into, I think, what's gonna be a very important shooting phase. Anyone have any heroics to declare? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. For the culture. Waste the might, waste the might. So the betrayer is gonna call, of all things, 
a heroic shoot. All right, and he is within six inches of that Taskmaster. So does he get that for free? Hell yeah, he oh, does. Nice. So that doesn't cost you any might. Sean, are you going to counter that? Waste the fuck. Nah. <laughs> no, okay, so that's going to go directly into Alex's heroic shoot. That is a rare heroic action. It doesn't get used much. What a crazy start to the game. Two no moves and then a ton of shooting. Alex is just absolutely throwing everything he has into this. And importantly, the Betrayer, at the start of the turn, declared that he was using his Master of Poison special ability, which means that all of Alex's failed to wounds are able to be re-rolled. Alex is going to use this ability every single turn this game. So at the end of Alex's shooting, what, that was three fate taken off, two guys dead, and one guy spent a point of might. So pretty costly. Yeah, rough, rough turn, but uh, is what it is. And we've got some shooting coming back from those rangers. Let's see how this goes. These rangers are all hitting on threes, wounding on fives. They all also have a point of might, and pretty much any time Sean rolls a four to wound, he's willing to spend that point of might to make sure he can get plenty of kills. He's got 26 might points in his army, so this is something that he can certainly afford, especially when he can put damage on Alex just like this. And here we are at the end of a wild and brutal shooting phase. Alex, how many did you lose in the end? Seven. It's a basically dead Ooh. even on points lost, which is 22 That's shots, seven really... models dead. How many archers did you lose? At six. Okay, so you are losing the shooting war. Yep. Yeah, all right, that's gonna go into next turn. This is gonna be very interesting. Priority went to the Haradrim. Alex, what have you done? So unfortunately losing seven models and six of them being archers, we it's not even worth trying to keep up the shooting battle yet. We're calling a march on Soladan, and now let's see if it's free from the Taskmaster. Yeah. It is. It is. So you haven't spent a point of might yet, which is nice. Now last turn you were debating either marching or doing the heroic shoot, and uh, it was pretty clear that marching would have been better. And Soladan is running forwards. He can go up to 15 inches because of that march, but he's not going all the way because he wants to get all those infantry with him. Now the march was definitely the right call here because the Taskmaster is so powerful. The Taskmaster has a special rule that means that every single time a friendly model within 6 inches of him calls a heroic move, march, or shoot on the roll of a 4-up, it is completely free. Taskmasters are one of the most cost-effective models in the game, so it's no surprise that Alex has one in his tournament army. That went over to Sean's movement, where he's just pulling back with some of his rangers here, moving half so he can get another turn of shooting in. We'll see if it does as much damage as that first turn. Alex really needs to get into that fight. Uh, if it goes into a shooting phase, this might be scary. We started with Alex's shooting, what happened there? Just one shot. No effect, unfortunately. I think we have other, other priorities at the moment. Now, Sean's army is going to fall apart really quickly if he gets into a bad position in combat, so he needs to be getting ahead on these kills in order for this match to be even when the combats finally start. And while he did spend a couple more points of might this turn, he did pretty well in his shooting. And at the end of the shooting phase, Sean killed another four models. How many have you lost in total, Alex? Eleven. Eleven, all right. So you need to hit him hard and fast. That's going to go into next turn. And priority this turn went to the Rangers. Alex, what have you done? So I didn't want to necessarily call a march uh, because I'd like to charge, but in case Sean just moves away, I had to. So Taskmaster calling a march, and luckily for the third time this game, it's for free. So anyone in doubt about Taskmasters, that's three free points of might this game so far. Dude's a Chad. And that goes into Sean's move, and he's starting with these rangers up on the gatehouse, and they're moving across, and this is because Sean's playing the long game, and he wants to make sure that by the end of the game, these guys are in prime position to get some of Alex's back objectives. Elsewhere, the rangers are just slightly pushing forward to make sure they're going to have line of sight, and some of the rangers are charging in just to help delay Alex's forces. That goes into Alex's move phase. So even though I've called a march with the Taskmaster, I needed to actually charge models, so... Before the Taskmaster moves, anything I wanted to charge with uh, has gone in. So the Sword and Betrayer and the Serpent Rider uh, and Raza. And now that all my charges are done, the Taskmaster will move, which will start the march. And now everyone else can't go into combat, but they don't need to. And now they get the extra three inches of movement. 
So really well played from Alex there, knowing that if you call March, you don't have to move first. This is a really great tactic that you can use in your game if you're going to be calling heroic marches. Now the rest of Alex's guys who came around the flanks are just charging in to get as many fights as possible. And here we are at the end of maybe the longest movement phase I have ever had to film. That takes us into the shooting phase and Sean's got plenty of shots here at some of Alex's spearmen. Sean's shooting this turn wasn't quite as impressive. He spent one point of might off this ranger to kill one Haradrim Spearman, and the rest of his shooting just got one more kill. And that goes into the combat phase. I'm expecting some heroics. Obviously, starting with you, Sean, are there any from you? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to call anything. All right, Alex, what about yourself? Um, I will start with a heroic combat from the Betrayer. The Betrayer, okay. So even though he's one attack... He's gonna risk it. With one more, fight five, he has the banner reroll. I need to put some pressure on. All right. Sean, any response? Nope. Solodan will call one as well. All right. Anything else? Rasa will also call one. All right. So this is a big turn, trying to make up for some of those early kills that Sean got. And starting with the Betrayer fighting a Dunedain, let's see it. I've got hey. it. The Betrayer has got it on the six. Now wounding on fours, and he has poison weapons. He rerolls it all. Uh, not a Bane of Kings Bane inherently of Kings. kills him yeah. just for fun. It's five, three wounds. Three wounds. And Alex just used this opportunity to charge into two more rangers, hoping to get more kills. And the next combat goes into Suladan fighting a ranger. Got it. Suladan mm. on the six, nice and healthy. Rabtastic. I'm going for the red dos. Uh, first set of dice, rerolling everything, four to wound. Two two so Solidon is now charging into two more rangers. This could be the turn that Alex needed. The next fight is Raza with some friends fighting against one ranger who doesn't have any might or faith. But everyone in that fight's fight four, so it could be interesting. Oh, did I, I get a rap? There is an no. Antmoot six in there. Bottom. I'll do just Raza for the, for the flurry. Loves it. And Raza yeah. gets it. Raza and one of the guys who were touching that ranger that they just killed are now charging a single Dunedain over the barrier, hopefully just going to break the numbers down. And that went into the normal fights that started with Sean losing a ranger, but then killing a serpent rider. Raza fighting over the barrier managed to do two wounds and kill another ranger. This ranger had to spend a point of might, but because of that managed to get a kill against one of those Haradrim warriors. Suladan, who went and charged into two more, managed to get two more kills. The Betrayer got another kill and finished off with a Serpent Rider getting a kill. And here we are at the end of that combat phase. That was wild. Sean, how many models did you just lose? Look, I just lost nine models this turn. Really in a bad spot. So that was 225 points that just died in one phase for you. It's... I'm, I'm speechless, to be honest. So, Alex, you lost a lot of models early. How do you feel now? Yeah, losing only four models that turn two in combat, all for the low, low cost of five might points. Not too bad. Phenomenal. Priority this turn went to Alex on the evil side. Sean, what have you done about that? Uh, Dunedain Ranger Willie Pete over here has called a heroic move just to try and tie up some dudes. All right, and Alex, what have you done? Uh, Taskmaster's called back both to make sure I get the jump on those two rangers and it gives me some uh, control in the middle of the board as well. Absolutely, and that Taskmaster's been doing pretty well so far. Was this point of might free? It was absolutely free. It's wow. for this game. So four he's generated four. Free, four free points of might. What a huge unit. But now we have the roll off. Two goes first. One, two, three goes evil. Four, five, six goes good. Let's go. Goes evil. And Alex has started his movement by just shifting that Taskmaster, staying largely in the same place because he wants to move guys both on the left and right side of him, with Suladan running around the house so he can go straight towards Arathorn and the cluster of rangers over there. Because that delayed Sean's heroic, that means it goes straight into Alex's normal move where he's pulling guys back towards those objectives because I think he knows that the game could be close to over. When someone breaks, it's going to go very, very quickly from there. We're at the end of the movement phase here, and as you can see, there's some fights over here. Importantly, Sean, you left these guys. These three stayed still. What's the thinking there? Yeah, so these boys up uh, up top here have stood still solely on the fact that uh, Alex has moved some boys towards the objectives. If I can pick off a couple of them, uh, he's uh, going to be stressing a little bit. Yeah, so Alex isn't broken yet, but it's looking like this game could be close to a finish. So if you can kill some of the guys at the objectives, that's a big, big deal. Absolutely. 
Alex's shooting was really lucky and he managed to take down this ranger in combat. And in Sean's shooting, these three guys fired down and only managed one kill, but that is an important kill. And that takes us into the combat phase. Any heroics to declare? Yeah, so I'm calling a heroic combat with this lad over here who is in the fight with that serpent rider. Absolutely, any from you, Alex? Uh, Betrayer over in the corner is gonna call one. Hopefully he can let me uh, readjust my lines a bit. So that's Betrayer out of mind? Out of mind. All right, anything else? And finally, Arathorn is striking up against Raza, assuming that Raza's target for his special ability is Arathorn. Yeah, so Raza's currently fight four, but if Arathorn is his secret target, he'll go to fight six when they fight. And Raza, is going to strike back. Sean still doesn't know if that's my target, but either way, I'd like to have the high fight. And the first fight is this heroic combat in here. Let's see it. Oh, big grab six. All yours. And should kill on fours. All right, first guy. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Good. And Sean, where are you going to end up with them? But this guy. <laughs> this guy's going to run. Bada bing, bada boom. he's not defending a barrier. Yup. Yeah, him. He'll charge there. And the next fight is the Betrayal fighting the Ranger. Let's see it. There's the six. Oh, the Ranger on the basically snake eyes there. Yeah. Not great from the Ranger. So nah. the Betrayal are going into combat nicely here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Love them They're nice and squishy, and the high fight is very nice. Uh, Force to wound, re rolling everything. Oh, oh re rolling everything, thanks to Banner Kings. And that's three wounds. There we go. And that kill has now broken the Rangers. So they'll be taking courage tests next turn and the train just going after that central objective makes sense. And in the next few fights, one ranger went down, but then Sean was able to get two kills in response, slowly chipping Alex's numbers away. The next fight is Raza fighting Arathorn. As you guessed, Raza's target is Arathorn. So instead of being fight four, I'm going to start the fight at fight six. They both struck. Let's see their fight values. Oh, no. Ooh, so Raza's fight eight, Arathorn's fight six. Yeah, it's rough. <gasps> Raza on the five, does he have any might left? He does, oh, but two. I'm happy to trade off if you want. What's your, I go four. four. You have to spend two to make me spend one. It's a bit of fun. It's in the ways though. I'm not going to spend anything. Makes all sense. Right. Uh, it's all because I'm going to do in the ways and I back away. In the way for the barriers. Two get through. And these are fives re-rolling. There's one. Just one. Oh. Take that fake, baby. Do you want to use uh, that fake? Yeah, I'll use my fake. Oh, no. Uh, point of might on that. That is nah. a VP. Not going to spend. It will, it's one, only one VP, even if I kill him. I'm not going to do it. This is the last fight of the turn. It's this Spearman fighting this Ranger. If Sean gets this kill, which is not looking likely, or no, he hasn't got it, that would have broken Alex. But watch this. Fives to win re-rolling. It's cocked. That's cocked. Re-roll it. Ah, triple ones, baby! At the end of that turn, Alex is one off broken still. Priority went to... Me. Sean, all right. <laughs> and Alex, what have you done about that? Uh, the Taskmaster is calling a heroic move. Shall we see if it's free? Oh. We absolutely shall. God. Oh, it's not. Spend a point of might! <laughs> so the Taskmaster is finally out of might, but boy, has he done well this turn. Sean, have you counted anything? Uh, yeah, so uh, old mate purple boy over here is calling a heroic move. All right, give us a roll in the great hall. One, two, three goes evil. And it does go evil. <laughs> oh, I just want to win a roll, officer. It's absolutely massive that Alex isn't broken here because there's no courage tests. The Serpent Horde doesn't have fantastic courage, so he could have taken a lot of losses due to that. But instead, he's one wild loft, so he's free to move however he wants. It does mean that the game should be close to over, so Alex is really thinking about his objectives. That went into Sean's move, where he did lose a ranger to courage, which is unfortunate, but the rest of the remaining rangers just did what they could. Sean decided to stay still with those three archers, because they can just kill Alex's guys that are currently taking objectives, and this Haradra Moria, funnily enough, failed a leap test, so is not within three of the objectives, so if this is the last turn, Alex won't get any points for that one. And here we are at the end of the movement phase. Now, importantly, Alex is controlling this objective, this objective, not that one, this one here in the center and that one back there. So he's currently got four out of five. That's going into the shooting phase where Sean might be able to ping some off 
And if Sean can get one kill, that'll be the break. The shooting phase started out with one of these rangers spending a point of might to hit, but still not wounding. But the next one got the kill. So Alex is broken and off that objective. That's taking us straight into the combat phase. Are there any heroics to declare? Uh, as it stands, I'll pass. Sean? Arathorn's going to strike. All right. So Arathorn's got one left. Will Raza be countering that, Alex? Um, no. I'm going to hold my one just to make sure I can win the fight in the first place. I could die, but we're not too stressed about that. And into these next fights, Sean is just trying his best to survive this turn. There's a chance that he can get courted in this fight phase, but he needs a game to go for one more turn. If that can happen, and then he can tie up Alex's heroes, a lot of the Haradrim will flee the battlefield, which would completely change what the scoreboard's looking like. At the moment, Alex has a big lead, but with a low courage army, that can change just so, so quickly. Arathorn won against Raza and put a wound on him. And at the end of that turn, Sean is one model off courted, Alex is well and truly broken. That goes into priority. And priority went evil. Sean, what did you do about it? Uh, so I've caught a heroic move with this bad boy there. And Alex? Soladan called a heroic move with his last point of might. Or was it? Yeah, because that Taskmaster, once again, three point of might. They are huge. Uh, Sean, give us a roll off. One, two, three goes evil. Four, five, six goes good. I'm doing this for you, Zork Daddy. No! I'm a cry. I'm a cry. So Sordan's run back there with the Hero of Legend. He's auto passed his first courage check. But Alex, what's he doing? So not only is Sordan a Hero of Legend, he has a 12 inch stand fast from the Rule Ascendant. So hopefully, um, well, he will. Uh, that little serpent guard down there will pass his courage chest and stay on that objective. This was a really tactical play out of Alex to call a heroic move and then not call with me to get a stand fast into a better position. It went into Sean's move next who had plenty of courage tests to make with these rangers. Unfortunately because they're all heroes there is no such thing as stand fast when it comes to rangers. Some of them fled which unfortunately means that this will be the last turn because Sean is courted. So Sean just has a little bit of damage control here as Alex finishes the job and will clean up the rest of his guys. That went into Alex's normal movement where there's not too much happening in the main line, it's just some guys shifting around. Alex wasn't able to cover his whole army with Standfast, so he did lose some guys to Courage, but I think for Sean, it's too little, too late. And in Sean's shooting, he had hopes of getting some victory points and hitting Suladan, but those hopes were in vain. They both missed on double ones. So this guy's going to finish the game with the point of might each, which is a little bit sad. And that takes us into the combat phase. Sean was able to win the fight against this Taskmaster, and then this happened. Ah! Well, it's a moral victory! It's right, it's right, it's right. Oh, two words from that ranger into the Taskmaster. Fate point or is dead. If there's one thing the Taskmaster has been good at, it's four plus. Yes! That is the most overperforming Taskmaster I've ever seen. <laughs> It was a Conquest 6! 4 plus! And the rest of the combat's finished up with no further casualties, meaning that we are at the end of the game. And the final score at the end of the game is 2 points for this objective, 2 points for this objective, 2 points for that back one, 2 points for the central one. Alex also broke and wounded the leader, so he is on 10 points, and Sean just gets 1 point for breaking Alex. With a victory to the Haradrim. That was a fantastic start for Alex, and in his next game, he's going to play against whoever wins between Nathan and PJ. So it's going to be a very interesting match for him. Well, I didn't bring my A game, and I'm going to go home and cry. Well, we've managed to get a win. It was looking a bit dicey. <laughs> we've managed to clutch up the win. It was looking a bit rough at the start, but we managed to make it work. On to the next round. Thank you for watching and please check out this video's sponsor, Epic Basing.